guys there's no shot they take both these points guys i hate to have to do it it hurts it hurts but let me see the flutes in the chat boys Back where you fucking started, Weiji. <laughs> Someone has to fucking flip the burgers, dumbass. All right, guys, so how did we get here in the first place? Let's let's back up, let's talk about the lore, and why is NA and Europe fighting each other despite, obviously, the ping differences on whatever server they decide to play? It first started off Parabellum wanting to make the move towards Castle of Steel, which is, I believe, a US East server. Um, they were motivated in this project because one of the main reasons was that they were on top in Europe for a very long time and they didn't really have the competition. Before Mangaloko was established, there was Bonsai 2.0 and they were getting crushed. And Mangaloko then resurged from Bonsai 2.0. Eventually, Mangaloko became stronger and stronger and actually overtook Power, but at the time they created this project, that was not the case. Power was on top, undisputed. They were mostly one flagging Mangaloko or just winning them at the forward stage. And even though we had great wars, they believed that they could venture out and try something new. Which, who could blame them, right? But anyways, there was a lot of banter going on between the two regions. They, there was even an interview, I believe, on your boy Willie's cast. Um, pretty much just having some sort of, not necessarily a debate, but just friendly trash talk. I'm not sure how friendly it was, but in general, it was just competitive rivalry and a clash of nations, right? So... We are at the stage right now where people are lacking so much content in the PvP department that they're going out of their way to go to a different region. This time around, it's NA. So obviously Parabellum, they pretty much got their ass whipped on NA. A lot of it came down to the ping, a major factor in fact that they refused to believe or credit just because they believe that their meta, their strategy is better. And now here we are, they're on Europe, they're getting their ass whipped by a significantly weaker company than Parabellum and Mangaloko. And honestly, it wasn't really close. Like sure, they got into the fourth stage because they split, um, but they never really won a 50 v 50. And on top of that, I don't think people were taking serious anymore after the 15 minute mark because the game just felt like an OPR. So here we are and pretty much we are waiting for an actual top dog to fight DNA on the European region. I honestly like I'm from Mangaloko. And I really don't believe they'll ever be able to take a flag against us. It's a little bit of a meta. It's a little bit, obviously, due to their strategy. I don't think they have a good strategy to deal with the outskirt presence from Mangaloka. And we're going to be talking about that afterwards. But even against Para, which has a little bit of a different style to Mangaloka, but uh, obviously a European twist to the meta, I don't think they'll even be able to take one flag. If they do take a flag, it'll be purely based on just splitting. And I don't think uh, they'll ever be able to get two flags. So that's not really a good case to say that NA is better. Of course, I'm also going to mention the ping because the ping was a big factor why European could just not perform on the American server. Most of the people were getting 150 plus ping. Obviously, there was very desyncing on certain weapons. People didn't want to wake up at 4 to 5 a.m. to play against America. Obviously, there was people, but it wasn't the best quality players that want to commit because obviously people have lives. Maybe not me, but people have lives, okay, guys? So let's now focus on the strategy. All right, so let's talk about the strategy now. And as you can see here, they have a very aggressive stance here. This is kind of how they want to approach in the 50v50 to take over the fort. They're going to be bum rushing with their supposedly what they call 
dive groups is a disruptor group in the European region. It's just composed of two bruises, a VGIG, and generally a range DPS that's mostly consisted of the BB. Sometimes they run five stars, but if they run the BBs, they're mostly been playing on the back line, either be mediums or lines. They generally have three to four of them. Um, but the main problem here is they're necessarily just trying to take and take space like this is their win condition they want to take space they want to get in our back line they want to make it very messy they want to disrupt their healers while their raid pushes up they're obviously protecting their back line with their dex groups which is 10 and 9 um, don't really take too much attention towards the number of the groups it's just like a baseline okay but essentially their 9 and 10 is composed of bows as well as kind of like a flex dynamic in the european region which is two fire stars it's not necessarily light grade swords there is a mix sometimes they do medium sometimes they do light i guess it depends on who was signed up for them right because it's not every single player that's going to be able to play at the time zone that they did declare the war because this is the european region after all and we had the same issue when we did go to the american region as well obviously i was playing for power na as a mango loco player but yeah nonetheless the big problem I see here, obviously, their backline is very, very flimsy here. As soon as DPS from the defenders come through, either be the dex, the flex taking over from the a wide swing, which is mostly what we're going to be talking about, because a lot of their win condition comes down to taking over our backline. But the problem with that is you actually need to be able to sustain long enough. And that's just not going to happen when you have two enemy groups either be on the left or right just coming through the outskirts here and because they play a very defensive stance here not allowing them to actually deal with these targets here their healers are just going to die one by one and if they don't have these healers playing on the left or right because they're being dealt by the dex and flex who is accordingly pushing up and dealing and taking more space these groups will just collapse and they'll be forced to jump on the point for sacred or they're going to be fully relying on splash of light which is honestly i mean it's not a terrible ability but it kind of is a terrible ability when you want a longevity in terms of sustainability right so it's just not realistic for them to play like this when they do not have the outside controlled and they just never did and the main issue is because these groups do not push far enough and the thing is they wouldn't even be able to because a group composed of four bows would stand no chance against a typical dex or flex team which is mostly composed of medium dex players and bows or fire staff so they have a lot better presence when it comes to the 5v5 but they also work better together just in general let's just assume these two groups were to combine forces they still are very flimsy very based on ranged um, DPS but as soon as their space gets taken away they're just useless they're not able to kill anyone they're fully reliant on these to kind of frontline for them and BBs medium BBs but the problem about medium BBs in these quadrants playing on the back is they're just not going to be matching these fights they're going to be first of all busy with the disruptor groups of EU as well as the DPS classes of EU which we use a lot more malaise and even our dps quads are playing in the enemy backline for the most part not always but for the most part so these guys are going to be busy and they're not going to be very coordinated because they're not on the same comms either so they're just going to be seeing targets they're going to be shooting targets obviously if we zerk from one side of course they're all going to match on the same side but that doesn't tend to happen because obviously eu they do kind of split their decks apart um and flex as well obviously there's a group missing here but i'm not going to be adding it here for you know private sensitive information potentially for the next war they're gonna have to figure this out before they fight uh, mango loco but uh, nonetheless it's just very easy to take over these groups here and just play from the outskirts. and this is generally what happened for the most part of the war these groups were kind of just taken out or they just played all the way back to the towards the war camp and then these would just clash towards the back and their healers their bbs everything would just die and we're going to be showing a lot of footage regarding this and this was the primary reason i just feel that na is not going to be able to keep up against the european meta and sure i think the style of them trying to take the back line is very good it's a very good win condition taking the outside stage flags but the problem with that it just doesn't work if you don't have that outskirt control and because they play so passively with these groups also because of their composition is just purely based on their back line we are going to be taking space and once we take space, not only are we dealing with these guys, we're dealing with every healer that's trying to play in their back line. Whereas our healers, they only have to deal quads. Quads just don't have the ability to actually kill healers. Yeah, they can disrupt, but they're just not going to have enough presence. 
EU healers are very good at surviving as well. And I don't think NA is really used to playing that aggressive. So we definitely have a big advantage when it comes to actually killing people um, based on the meta, the strategy, and just the general way they're putting their groups to deal with the healers. But we're going to be actually demonstrating some clips and let's just indulge in it right now. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you guys a couple of footage. It's just mostly playing from the flex team. This is pretty much me displaying with my flex group. We're playing on the left side, obviously. We take a lot of control on the outside and we make sure that there's no enemy healers playing on the left side because if there is no healers playing on the left side, their supposedly disruptor groups, which I believe they call it the dive groups, are not able to play in our back line. And they're very linear the way they push into our back line. They kind of play from the Bruiser VGIG line. They don't really wrap around from the Dex line or the healer line. So we just go around them. We pressure these healers. We wipe them all the way from back left towards top left. And in general, we want to take over their back line from the left stance. Um, playing from the flex perspective and it was really really easy to do so i would assume it's probably even easier for our dps players and i'm not exactly sure what happened on the right side but i would assume it's probably the same thing as well and it's just because of the way they kind of compose their strat just bomb rushing into your back line really without supporting your back first into pushing a quadrant from the outskirt because if you don't take over the outskirts you're just going to get run over and you're not going to be able to actually sustain long enough in the enemy back line and i feel like this is one department where na is extremely behind um, they kind of just expect to take the back line just by creating chaos but that's really not the reality of things a lot of it just comes down by step by step if you are able to control the outskirt with either dex or flex then now your bruises can push up with your healer able to present themselves around that area and providing heals. Of course, the NA guys, they play a lot of splash of light. So yeah, you have some sort of global, it's not necessarily global, but you get the point. There is some sort of global aspect of healing, but it's just not enough to sustain because yes, you're going to be fighting into the enemy back line. There's going to be some DPS there. There's going to be some groups there as well. And obviously the flex group could even potentially assist, but we just didn't really feel like it was a need. So we're going to go through it right now. As I was mentioning before, we're just clearing out the back left side here. We're just taking it one by one. And at this position, we've already taken their top left, starting from a very outskirt angle here. We take out these two guys. We're going to be able to collapse onto the point. You can see here, we've already taken the top left space, which means now our healers could even potentially play top left. Our DPS could just invade from the left stance as well, unless they want to protect the back line. And it just seems like a very super easy um, wipes coming from a top quad perspective. And we are not necessarily a top quad, we just get to the top quad if the left quad is mostly clear. And we kind of took opportunities very, very often. It felt like a little bit of an OPR this game. I'm not going to be showing too much, but as you can see here, they're just completely vulnerable. Very flimsy builds playing from the top quads. We just invaded for free. These guys don't even know what's coming because we're coming from a very outskirt swing with the other group as well. And all their healers are now just completely disrupted or killed i mean we're playing a flex group it's not necessarily a dive slash disruptor group so we're actually getting kills which is even worse for them and you can see that their dex fights us but they're so uncoordinated they don't really have a melee on the same targets as the bows um, it just seems like they're not very synced up and we are taking the fight very outskirt lint so their bbs aren't even coming to this fight that's the problem about bbs compared to fire stars fire stars you have that mid range so you can actually assist but BBs, you have to put yourself in a close position. And because they see other people, they don't really feel compelled to run all the way out in the outskirts to be a part of this fight, which obviously gives us a lot of leeway to punish their decks and then just go into the heals or into those BBs who are completely on their own. Now, obviously, if we see a lot of people pushing from our left side, we will come back. We will make sure that we are cleaning out, at the very least, their healers so that the groups from our back line are going to be able to deal with the, the dive slash disruptor groups. But otherwise, we're just going to keep that pressure. And you can see this line here. It's completely open. Sure, now they are contesting us, as you can see in this picture here. But again, like there's just no real melee frontline holding them. We're just able to invade it. And we're bringing the fight to their back line. It's even worse that they're keeping this very defensive line. Generally in Europe, you are matching them in a very aggressive manner. So obviously you try to cut them off before they even get to your top quad. Because if you do that, um, they're not able to 
get collateral damage, right? So if we're playing from top left and we're engaging a fight against their bows or whoever is up there defending their backline, we're gonna have the ability to just switch into a healer that's out of position or just around the fight that's happening and they are just gonna get disrupted naturally. And this is something I really dislike about NA. Um, they do it a lot in the defense, and the defense makes a little bit more sense, but on the attack, you need to take risks. You actually need to take the opportunity to control it more over the outskirts, but they are just relying on the dive groups, which is not a smart idea. And we are just able to invade for free, and then once we win the outskirt, all of our groups start pushing up as well. So, I'm not going to show too, many, too much footage regarding this war, because a lot of it just came down to the same thing. They forced themselves to split because they just could not win a 50v50. And that's kind of a grim sight. Obviously, Badgers isn't the strongest skilled. Mangaloko, I think, beat him in like 10 to 12 minutes. Um, I think it was like 12 minutes on an attack. Now, obviously, they ended up getting into the fort. But a lot of the reasons why they got into the fort, well, the two main reasons was because this game kind of felt like an OPR. My group was kind of just free playing around the, I think, 12 minute mark, maybe even earlier than that, maybe 10 minutes into the war, we were kind of just free playing and we were just playing OPR modes. But when it came down to the splitting, yeah, they did a pretty good jo job at splitting. They kept respawning and sending respawns to the opposite flag and they were kind of coordinated when it came to that aspect. But the reality of things is we were also kind of just free playing we didn't really respect it because it was already towards the half of the war and i don't think they really believed that it would be getting into a fourth stage it did get into the fourth stage at the end of the day but pretty much with no time to work with and yeah and as you can see here we are always able to get into their back line and make their back line pretty much always contested it wasn't just disrupting we were actually killing them whenever we push up and you can see here top left is absolutely free they have one medium great sword and great axe which is a weird composition obviously in the year side of things obviously it might be a standard thing there but we are just completely running them over these medium bbs just are not tanky enough and they can't really find a proper flex slash dex group so we are just able to mold them down little by little, take over more space, farm their healers, and it just became unplayable to them. And <laughs> these were the moments where we kind of were joking around. I think at this stage, we're kind of already memeing at the, in the war, but as you can see here, they're doing a regroup and just sending it all over towards the side flex. And that's pretty much it, guys. Now, I don't really want to go too extensive on their meta because I believe that there's still a lot of things we haven't really seen enough of for me to actually be elaborating more in depth towards their playstyle. And also, they haven't versed Mangaloko or Parabellum either, so it's going to be a completely different war. Now, if they get into the fall, we could probably make a video regarding that. But for the meantime, we're not going to be spilling too many of our beans. We're going to keep it uh, nice and neat for just today's war. And uh, I mean, look forward to the next one. I'll be updating you guys when it does happen. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. See you later.